Think about your best friends, the ones you call family. Have them in mind. What if I told you they were carefully articulating a plan to brutally murder you? You think I'm joking, but the reality is far outlandish than you can ever imagine. This would be nightmare come true on September 22, 2006, for Cassie Jo Stoddard, a 16-year-old student at Pocatello High School. She was the average teenager, outgoing and well liked by everyone, and maybe perhaps a little too extroverted. Through many opportunities, she became friends with her classmates Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik. These boys were quite the opposite of Cassie, as they were quiet and stuck to themselves. Cassie was the only other friend that they were seen hanging out with. To everyone's eyes, the two were just troubled teens, ones who are going through a difficult phase in life. However, unbeknownst to everyone, they were hatching a plan so vile that it would leave anyone sick to the stomach. Brian and Tori were avid fans of the Columbine massacre. For those unaware, this incident was a school shooting which occurred on April 20th, 1999. Similarly. The two responsible were also two high school students, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebod. Unfortunately for everyone else, their names were plastered everywhere as news stations rushed to cover the tragedy, which all contributed to their fame. Their actions developed into a sort of cult following for those who desperately needed to fit in. Brian and Tori decided that the murder of Cassie would bring them fame and admiration. Which is why the process of planning was documented on camera in hopes of inspiring others like themselves. Have you seen Tori? He's supposed to be in here at 7:30, and it's 8:19. He's an hour late. You, you don't even care, do you? <laughs> okay. September 22nd to 26th. We're skipping the next fourth hour. We're not even applying right now. I'm telling Cassie's family, but she had to number one. We have to stick with the plan. And she's perfect, so she's gonna die. <laughs> On that fateful day, the two again took out their camera and began documenting their heinous scheme. There should be no odds against killing people. I know it's a wrong thing, but you know, hell, you hell, you restrict somebody from it, they're gonna want it more. We found our victim, and sad as it may be, she's our friend. But you know what? We all have to make sacrifices. Our first victim is going to be Cassie Stoddard. She's going to be alone in a big, dark house out in the middle of nowhere. How perfect can you get? I, I mean, like, holy shit, dude. I'm horny just thinking about it. Hell yeah. Cassie, along with her boyfriend Matt Beckham, were house sitting for her uncle as her family was out of town. Brian and Tori arrived around 7 p.m. and joined in as the group started to watch the movie Kill Bill. As planned, Brian and Tori made an excuse to leave, making sure to secretly unlock the basement door just before they left. The two returned later with outfits which resembled the killer from Scream, and quietly entered the house from the basement. It's 9:50, September 22nd, 2006. We know there's lots of doors. There, there's lots of places to hide. I locked. The back doors—that's all locked. Now we just gotta wait. They made loud noises and even shut off the circuit breaker for the whole house, in an attempt to lure the two downstairs. Afraid, Matt wanted Cassie to stay the night at his house, but Cassie refused as she felt that it was her duty to look after the place. Matt was then picked up by his mom at around 10:30 p.m., leaving Cassie alone with the other two in the basement. Hearing Matt leave, Brian and Tori decided to strike. 
They rushed upstairs and attacked Cassie, who was just laying on the couch. She was stabbed 30 times by the people she called friends. I just killed Cassie. We just left her house. This is not a fucking joke. I'm shaking. I stabbed her in the throat and I saw her lifeless body just disappear. Dude, I oh just killed God. Cassie. Oh, oh, fuck. That felt like it wasn't real. I mean, it went by so fast. Shut the fuck up. We gotta get our act straight. Okay. Her body was discovered two days later by her family coming back from their trip. The incident was reported to the police and an investigation then ensued. Suspects were quickly identified as they literally documented every step of their murder progress. During the interrogation, the pair cowardly blamed each other, stating that the other person influenced them to commit the crime. There was no denying their guilt, so they led the police to the place where they disposed of their clothing and weapon. On August 27, 2007, Brian Draper and Tori Adamchik were convicted of first-degree murder, both receiving mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole and 30 years to life for being convicted of conspiracy to commit murder. They are currently serving their time at Idaho State Correctional Institution. When you have the time, take a second to think about the people around us. We just don't know which ones are truly friends and which ones are monsters waiting to strike.